Chair, so and we were just starting the process of going over some of the facilities conversation from our beginning months, uh, at, starting with City Hall and the historic firehouse complex. Uh, we were, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Third time in the chair. <laughs> we were uh, so what were the goals for this project uh, were we to better utilize the customer service experience um, utilizing this building as well as uh, the energy use and uh, the city hall, city offices workflow. Also, I mean, we want to make better use of, it's actually the physical space in the historic fire hall. Uh, we have an asset there that is vastly underutilized. In fact, uh, Sabrina and her staff were up there last Friday and actually throwing out some of the records that had fallen outside of our record retention policy I think some of the things you have to keep for up to eight years, and we were going back to the 1960s, so it's just away. So, um, if you have open space, it tends to become just storage. And so, we have we have that at least in droves, but it's a storage area that's very difficult to access um, and doesn't serve a lot of our purposes very well. So, we never we worked with the uh, architectural firm uh, LAS, Lorette, and Sargent, Lord at Sargent. Uh, LAS, and we've been going back and forth with them for quite a while. 
And it's in your packets. I believe you still have a copy of uh, this, the latest and greatest schematic that we've utilized that have against all kinds of included one of the uh, former slideshows. But um, what it does is it enlarges uh, the community space offerings for the city hall by utilizing the first floor of the sort of fire area, not only for an updated city, city hall and city chambers, but uh, the ability to segregate the section here that would just make it to be city hall and utilize the rest of the space as public areas for various events and public gatherings. Uh, it would also include better workflow for the offices, and it changes the front door, so you wouldn't come in from this side anymore. You now access it closer to the, the parking areas on Rosemont, so you come in from that direction, and you'd actually be greeted by um, offices and sort of a dedicated entrance instead of, uh, as I keep telling the long drive hallway from your city business. In addition to all this, um, there is a space for the museum that's comparable to what they have now, but uh, gives them the ability to make things out a little bit better. And then also, uh, there's some second floor conference rooms. So this is as far as we've come on the layout, the physical layout of that space and how we intend to use it. The current estimates for that project, for construction costs, are about between four and four and a half million when you get into from the uh, uh, architectural engineering drawings. So this has not progressed a whole lot farther since the last time we talked. This is a project that really, at this point, lacks a funding source. There's not been a whole lot of work since we presented to you last, but the, uh, the intent of the project has remained unchanged. And our goal is for it. Any questions on this room or on this building? The court building, the court side of things, the old carports, uh, our intent is to bring that down, keep it as a covered space for outdoor events. You know, we can host a number of different events in around this area. So you don't have only the roof there, but basically out, out of this door here would be the exterior of the building. It was the way it was originally designed. I'm pretty sure we tear off the wall that was in the very last block. So any questions again on this building with a sort of barrel? Um, you talk about these community events. What type of events do you see? Being used for, and how would this space not be a duplication of other space that could be available for the community at the community center or the library? It kind of would. A duplication of those things uh, because we have large community events, like even when we have overflow city holidays, if we're talking about something that gathers a large crowd, fitting them into this space, uh, as we found, is actually sometimes in shifts, it's sometimes it's just easy to be, uh, see it outside. So the occasional large conference room, or the occasional large council meeting, but also it is in part a duplication of some of the resources that we have over at the community center. So if we do have large events that are, we don't have to shift location, even if you find out going from that side of the parking lot to this side of the parking lot, can throw people off sometimes. So we have it here, we have a large thing in this area, and then some of the outside stuff would be like hometown holidays, lists for kids, some of the things that we have now that are defined in this space, but that can start to wrap around the building and expand a little bit. And there'd be some covered, uh, covered area for the summer, summer events that get that so, And then hopefully new events that come up as well. And then for the smaller areas, we'd like to open it up to community groups and things like that, as long as we can provide that you know, evening staffing like they do over at the rec center. So if um, any, this board, the advisory board, uh, community committee, city, you know, board, commission, or something like that, we will utilize the space as well. You say the range of what right now? It's between four, four and four and a half million, the best estimates right now. The money that we um, were getting from moving the courts over to Royal Oak, that's allocated already for the teardown of this, is that correct? Not in, not in full. We don't have an estimate on how much that would be yet. But the city still has about 700000 that uh, is left over from court fees. And that can be specific. You can use that. Okay. Yeah.
really anything that's uh, facility related can be utilized with that pot of money. That's already been approved. That's already planned to do that, right? I mean, is that is that considered part of this board for an enough plan, or I yes. that was already? Well, oh, it, it's in that number. Okay. More than likely, if we get to the point where we're doing this project, then we would be temporarily shifting office space over there for a phase two, for a phase phase renovation. What's the time frame? What time frame right now? I'll be on doing it, remodeling. Okay. Until we have a funding source available, there is no time frame. Anything from Oh, I'm sorry, I was going to slides, but maybe you can't have the time to read it there. This is the old one. This, okay. this, or I should say this is the existing one. Yeah, I don't think we got the new one in our own yeah. yeah. right. yeah. 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 I don't know, I don't oh. think it's been changed since the last time we looked at it. There was, the only thing we looked at changing was some of the front counter standards, but the rest of it is locked in to our best current estimation. All right, shifting to let me go into stuff or, sure. shifting to the community center, uh, coming off of the presentation that you guys saw at Santec uh, at your last meeting. We've got a couple of different options on uh, what to do with community center, a ice arena, or an indoor slash outdoor pool. Uh, you, get, you guys saw it's the total six different options that we have for laying out that property. Everything from the community center being built right where the uh, existing ice cream is today, to shifting it up towards coolidge or uh, shifting it up towards Calpa, and then bringing the tennis boards in the pit, and then applying ice arena and indoor pool in the remaining space around there. Uh, that those estimates change based on what is being proposed. But there were a couple that had revenue potential that exceeded cost that is specific to the ice arena. And then some of the most of them had the city applying some amount of money over the long haul uh, in the general fund to for operation basis. Can you clarify? I don't know the other the effect on the ability to fund the state money. There is um, an application from the city to repay a grant that was utilized to install those. Uh, if we end up having to do that, I've heard anecdotally, I don't know if it's a hard policy or not, that it does damage, does hurt our ability to gain new uh, grants down the road. But I've heard it discussed, but I haven't seen that written as a hard. But if we just move the tennis courts, then we went to have to okay. okay. yeah. have them. Right. Yeah. 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 So if there's anyone specific that we have questions about in particular layouts and um, they presented configurations that were additional questions? I don't know if you can answer it or not, or if anybody else remembers. When we're looking at the community center stuff, this was a system I have right now. I know we're talking about that in City Hall, but. But the option two would be limit just the case if the case center rec center and ice arena and that was with no tennis courts. Do you know why we put the tennis courts in the ice arena? Was it was it with parking? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Almost all the schemes presented were deficient parking, uh it was a small or some sort of large So it's just a last meeting. Full of what are the number of people were um, options and their interests on the different options. Um, 
any of the members did to kind of weigh in on what their where their interest was. Uh, nine of the ten people that responded had in their first choice community center on either on the west side of the drain or over near the original drain. Uh, when we looked at the first and second choices, uh, two people had a pool listed, one person uh, had us. So it sounded to me from the tone that a uh, couple of things were out for evidence, especially from discussions I had with people not on the public in a way. And, um, the pool is not a very private option, of course. It's strictly, you probably get nice things down, but the cost, initial cost, and that ongoing. Similar uh, thoughts were on the ice cream. That's a lot of money as well. And well, initially, it looks as though it could be self sustaining and actually have a positive revenue flow uh, as years go on and our maintenance goes up. That I think is as well. Um, a couple of things that also were expressed. Uh, was the size of the uh, It was a prevalent thought that the size of what has been proposed right now is too big for our size community. That um, it was more the size that we look at for a 50 to 75 resident community. And could we look at an option uh, on a little smaller scale? So, just what we discussed this a little bit. I think it's a valid concern. I think we also want to look at where we want, to, where we want that community center to be. Uh, we want to be able to have indoor soccer. We want to dance club that is spot for indoor, uh, their indoor baseball in off season. A couple of people have made comments about do we really need two basketball courts? Well, no, we probably don't need two basketball courts, but we can fit them in there. I don't think it's always going to be two basketball courts. Right. So, yeah. I would say yes. And the reason why I would say yes is because they would both be used and one might be used for something else at the same sure. time. Yeah. I would sure. say yes to the basketball court. Well, that explains it. Right. And that's kind of, you know, it, yeah. this is just my personal thoughts, but mm -hmm. I agree that, you know, it's, it's a pretty large undertaking. As we were talking about some of the reasons, and I think that makes a good point too. They also brought up do we need a workout facility? We've got that nice one in the high school. I think we talked a little bit about that pool last go around. Okay. Those those facilities, it's the school first, and then when available, if available, uh, for the public. Not yeah. as much need as a want, but it all can back down the priority, right? Uh, it would be interesting to see in this tech what kind of uh, cost a smaller facility would have. And would one give us another option that would also give us a, a measuring stick to determine is it, you know, we're talking about $2 million difference, and we feel like. Two million dollars is worth it to have the bigger, better facility with the walking track to, you know, enough room for two or maybe it's not. So, I thought too, it's kind of like similar, I guess, to what we did with water and roads because we had said that to exceed a certain amount. Could we do something similar to that with respect to the community? I mean, obviously, we've got some figures in mind, but if we scaled that down to like the lower end of that or something like I think that that's absolutely, we can make whatever recommendation we want, right? We have to remember it's just a recommendation. So sure. if we say not to exceed X, city council can choose to follow the recommendation, make a decision on their own, and they may say, like they did with water, you know, if your recommendation is a little too high, we want to scale that back. Just make a 
Square footage and where the square footage is allocated, and then based on the programs that can be housed, like what our current programs are okay, so utilized in there. No, I no so you'll see the across the, 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 the various configurations, you'll see the revenue number of changes based on the revenue potential. And so the only thing that's tied to our current budget number is if I understand the presentation correctly. What sort of what we get and how our programs we offer in that type of space now. Activities 
either. That is just more of the youth day-to-day -day programs. So like when you rent it for parties or kids and you feel like right. race that too, because it's going to be a lot probably yeah. more for us. Well, I would imagine things like that. That and more programs. Because yes. even like the camps yeah, right now, I know it's a, a lot of it is a space issue. I'm sure they would have more programs or, you know, they certainly have enough people that are have interest there. It's just yeah. there isn't a lot of space there. The, you do get a lot. Yeah. I think. What can I say? With the camp, we're actually bumping up against the state, the top, the state's top allotment at 160 children allowed. Uh, we're getting close to that. We probably will bump up to that after some of the other ones come in the summer. So yeah, even with what we have now, we're close. to probably you know, a couple years away, hopefully, from having even waiting lists in the state pool, yeah. which is interesting. Is that because of the size? There's a couple different things that go into play. For whatever reason, the state, uh, or Teresa would say, the state, the highest level that they would award us was 160, and they did do that. Uh, as far as why we're growing, Teresa attributes to some of the other kids closing in the area, I mean, just us building a better reputation by having more children to kids, which means you'll more next year as the reputation is higher. So it is a possibility of the state upping that number? I think, I don't know, I heard they only go up to 160. Okay. So I think we're there, but I don't know if that's specific to the building of our type, or if that is top end, what the state will offer, so we can't period. But the good thing that means if they're selling out or they're full every year, we know that's, that's a solid revenue stream. But you think of other programs that we can't offer, like basketball, indoor volleyball, things like that, because we don't have the space, and I'm not sure if there are other alternatives to those at the school runs programs for younger kids, but other than a YMCA, I'm not sure where else you would go. But those are the type of programs that we could bring in here that we don't currently have. I'm sure Teresa has a few other ideas, but. They're very limited what we do for pre-teen and teen surprise. There's no space, yeah. 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 Yeah.
putting it out on Coolidge, or excuse me, out on the Telpo. on what you want to recommend. But what, I, what I've heard is the uh, community center, uh, option, option 1B, option one right where it is now, and leave the, leave the tennis courts where they are. And I guess I would add to that, subject to uh, input from stand tech on smaller facilities. And I don't know how quickly they can so one B. Is there a doubt of value that you'd want to cap it at when we talk about that? I mean, is that just to go back to stand talk? I feel like we need to say is it what value? Well, I don't know about to exceeding necessarily, but if we were to scale it back, how much would we save? What dollar amount is is it worth saving to they, make it, it smaller? Is that that's my concern when you say something like yeah. that. Sometimes then if we're not getting the extra use that um, that really person rent would like or need, it, then it's kind of silly. Which is what we talk about two basketball so, courts or one basketball yeah, court. Right. right. Yeah. So, yeah, but I, I think that if we go back and say this is the one that we're looking for, but we would like, you know, to, we'd like another view of what a smaller one, you know, the cost would be what functionality it would be just so that we have two of these things there. I mean, right now we're just kind of guessing. We're yeah, guessing at what size the building would be, what would, you know, they're the ones who have the numbers and the scale, you know, figures. But they have small ones. Well, but they've already like, given them. Right. Like, right. like, they've they already right. given themselves, though, $3 million <laughs> of construction cost range. And so that could be within the range potentially. I don't know. Like I guess what are what are how much more savings are we looking to find? Would it be another three on top of that range or and I don't think the question it wasn't posed to me as far as the dollar amount of savings and more size of the building. But they thought one, it was aggressive. Um, and I think general consensus here was probably not terribly impressive. I mean, I, um, my sense is that they know what they're doing. I mean, I, we paid them money to do this, so I'm assuming they came up with these numbers based on the community center that they thought made sense for the community. I don't know. And you have to think about things like you know, was mentioned, one batch of all courts, the two, we go on a smaller facility, do we, you know, does it make sense then to have the multi-use, multi-purpose area not be two stories because it's going to be smaller. You, know, you may not have the room for uh, indoor soccer or a walking track, uh, you know, the raised walking track that we're talking about, things like that. So you may not be able to do those things in small. Facilities. And then is it worth it when walking track is like the best? I think they gave us that range. I think yeah. we actually, if we're looking at $40,000 to $55,000 square foot, I assume they're not going to deviate from that range. Right. If you want the smaller, I think it's the size of the size of the size of the size the size of the size of the size of the size the size of the the size of 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 the size of
with all the equipment yeah. and, you know, for that we're going to have to have this now. Yeah. 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 And they already did it. And they did it. And they did it. They did it. put in about the base ball, so maybe that's where it's, you know, which is a revenue generation for parks and rec. Right. So, I, don't, I, think so, the, I think the range they gave us, general. though, I don't think it was the size of the building, right? It's, they haven't. They haven't taken it up a bit, so they're saying here's a reasonable. If you do take it up a bit, I think it's going to fall in this range. They did. They did say. They did say yeah. forty thousand to fifty-five thousand gross square feet for the community center. Is that a lot? I think that's the land space. Is that the land space? Okay. No, but there's also a lot of land that they have the attachment that says for for eight million to ten million square feet. Yeah. 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 So they did give us that information. And part of the point of the two gyms, I'm just telling you, is the bigger facility. So you can have bigger events that you right. run out. So I guess I just really like the two courts, there is a reason for it. It's yeah. not awful. How far down does so, that sewer easement go? Coming right down through the middle there. I think it goes all the way through. Yeah. Comes the whole way down. So you have an actual limitation as to the width of oh, the sure. yeah. building. Yeah. yeah, looking at the picture, the length of it is what you're talking about. Yeah. Well, I think it's right. So, so, so you're really you're you're limited already to what you can do. Yeah. Right, and I think they put their kind of in. They did. Yeah, we heard the reason. I think two for two. That was for the two stories. You can't go out. Like, you can't necessarily go out. You can't go out. Right. Right. And then become your partner, too. So. so the question is so if, if we were to, to recommend that the city council put this on the ballot, the option one be protected range, I mean, are we going to have to get to the point where we know where closets are going to go or where specifics are? Or is that like after it's approved? So how far do we really need to go? I said, I guess, with regard to our committee, if we've already gotten to the point where we're recommending option one B, do we need to get any more detail or not? I think uh, that's at our discretion. And when we look at some of the other, the, the last set of recommendations that we gave, I think uh, we added some color at what our preferences were after the fact. I think that's. That's our recommendation to council, and in this case, it would be our recommendation to Stamp Tech and Parks and Rec and everyone else. That or we could say we recommend that there not be a fitness facility inside. Yeah, because you know, of, for this because reason. Of our and, you know, again, it's our recommendation, but it's given us, you know, we're making thoughtful decisions and that adds to the legitimacy. So I think that I me personally I feel like there's more information detailed in there. People understand it better and maybe it will come it will pass and we'll show them the important things to Right. Well I mean if we have the list of things that we're thinking about using that seem to include in this survey, I mean I would suggest that we go through each item in this option of pick. If we pick that one B, then we can go through the template they provided and say yes, no, yes, no. But for some space, and then maybe we'll realize we're going to need a bigger space or we need to need a small space. Not that I would ever advocate for that. On the other hand, that's problematic. People who are already right. hired. I, well, there's, there's nothing wrong. Right. Yeah, yeah, when you hire, exactly. When you hire a place like Stantec, or when someone hires me, and they come up halfway through the project or the very beginning because I'm making these suggestions, they have every right to say, you know, I don't think I want to go. This route. So if we decide, you know, plan, uh, plan of fitness, a fitness center, if we decide is not going to be congruent with the ideals that we're looking for that we're by the community center, I don't think we're being hard for it. We would work this by saying these are what we propose and we'll go into the senior center. Because we're doing it to try to bring the budget down so we can get this. Exactly. Program. What we're doing really is just kind of putting a bug sure. in their ears to think that, you know, we're 14 ever citizens, I right, think, less now, 13 maybe, um, that this is what we thought would be good. And you can take it or leave it, but I mean, you represent a subset of the population. So there's going to be someone in, that represents, or at least a bunch of people represent each person sitting in this chair. So I don't think there's a problem saying, 
know the fitness center and you know force me to walk the track. All it does is kind of give them um, a, a flavor of what the city's thinking. But just to me, that feels like a radical. I mean, I don't know enough about all these things to make an educated statement. I mean, I've never been to a walking track. Me personally, I'll never use a walking track. I wouldn't want one. But, you know, I've heard from other people that, yeah, it's important. So, like, I think as we start to go through and try to cherry pick each individual one, I'm going to have the same issues, and I'm sure other people will too, with each individual. Thing. But to me, that sure. seems like now we've got 14 hours. We have, you know, we have the survey. Different kinds of things that they wanted to see or different. Well, that's the same with the walking track. That was like the number one. Sure. Yeah. yeah. No, I, they I, 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 I know. I mean, no one is going to be so well versed in every single sure. class of the center. That's why we have the survey. That's why we have thoughts. Is so we can sit there and say, based on my uh, expertise, or at least at least my experience as a working resident, these are the things that kind of appeal to me. That will appeal to my family, you know, in November, and um, you know, whatever else. So I think um, I think if we're going to tell Santec to nix the fitness center, then we should at least kind of give them some informed input as to what it is that we are looking for out of the square footage. Because right now, all we're saying is we're going to rubber stamp a square footage in a dollar amount. I think we can be a little bit more particular with what's going to go inside the actual walls. Is that really our overall job? I don't think it is. How many items are there? Well, here's my but here's my thought though is that I feel like the most important job that we have is making a determination as to something that's permanent within the structure as opposed to something that could be fungible and used for other purposes. So with a fitness room, you know, it might be free weights and they could be used for that or it could be used for something totally different. So if there is something, you know, an element of the community center that is going to be a permanent structure that we definitely don't want, then I think we can definitely make our voices for yeah, that. But if it's something yeah. that or like could be this or that or something yeah. else, I don't know if we need to spend the time on that. Because if it doesn't work, they can change it out, basically. Yeah. The walls are built. It's just the building. Yeah. yeah. No, it's it's but I think, you know, when we're talking about the water and gas, of course, that's part of it. You know, we're filling in that is in the square foot. I would say too, just in the sense that you might have a team that's really aggressive, playing hard, and they're really talented, and maybe another team that's not. I mean, <laughs> I just feel like that's something that. You, well, I don't know. I just feel like that. Well. Or something too. I, I see, would choose. I see, I see too, just because it's flexibility. Is a big right. I mean, they have the walls and the full across. You know, you have a chance to do tournaments. I, one is short side. I guess the other the other thing I would say on this is you know, it probably makes sense then to say, you know, we want to look at option one, B, and then we would want you know, construction costs to not exceed ten million. And we would recommend that you hold public information meetings, gather public feedback and that because that's what they did on the first one as well. They had a couple of public sessions where you could pick and choose what you wanted from them. Um, I think yeah, I mean I think that's absolutely fully offset. But I think we're Absolutely. I agree. Yes. Or say subject to program descriptions and options identified by staff. There is a staff. Yes. I mean, they're the ones who run the programs and know what people are asking for and what they're not asking for. They've got to make use of the building. They're the ones that have the program. Yeah, right. And I don't think anyone of us are going to sit down and call me. What's your name down there? I'll sit down there and show up what to do. That you say we're recommending 1A subject to a range of funds and subject also to a number two to range of funds and subject also number two to description of problem with programming and facility options to be included. I don't know, just write comments. Yeah, and I, I get what you're, what you're saying, and maybe it's. Including in our recommendation that, as we mentioned before, that some public meetings are held to get further input from the residents as far as the specific programming they want to see in this facility. We gave the city gave a very broad survey task, right? Now, if we're going to say, okay, one B, here it is, 
maybe, uh, maybe more specific input uh, would be appropriate. Yeah. What, what do you want to see go in? One, two. Yeah, and Tim, if we could also just have it be, because I feel like a lot of the residents, including myself, would not really know what we want there, so if it would be something where we're like, yeah, these are these are options that could be there, and maybe have people rank them or, or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> we just need to show the cost. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I think Stantec did give us some of that information as I'm cheating off the uh, information Matt has over here, listening out. You know, I'd be surprised if most of us know there's a kitchen, in the center, yeah. right? So, but they had that the indoor track practice turf, the elevated track, the locker rooms, uh, fitness center, offices, main studio, things like that. So uh, they, they did give us a lot of that, and there's probably a lot that our arms included in here, too. So. We could also send it out basically saying, like, rank it and order your preference, too. Like, just leave those in the options. There's multiple ways to do that. It's literally easy that because we're going to try to cut space and cost. Like if we said it would be as too expensive as this, right. then we would do it in the elimination. Like you would have to bond for. Yeah, it would It would take years to raise the funds. Oh, and then again, and your millage rate will continue to be reduced with the CAP millage, so a bond is the way to go, unfortunately, even though you're paying interest costs. So far, I've been hoping for a rich uncle. Yes, you guys can. <laughs> 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 I think you made a deal with a guy out of California. Yeah, right now the interest rate on other bonds that are selling right now in Michigan is around 4%, so give or take. So that's why when I provided numbers, I based it on 4%, which seems to be the going rate, but on the federal level, who knows if that could end up. But and are we, are we planning on unifying the city hall and the community center projects for one item to be voted on, or are they going to be separated? Previous discussion that we had was uh, to include it all at one, but we can recommend whatever we want. I would strongly suggest that the committee not recommend it. It would be one bond. Yeah, each facility. 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 Yeah, each Okay. Wow. I would stress that we've got to make this as tight a proposal as possible. If you're going to have trouble, you're going to have to do the right thing. Yeah, did you see that the, the stock cost for the city hall and the historical, you said four to four point five? I believe, yeah, they're talking about the, um, I believe they use four point five to get the most conservative estimate. So, in terms of our ability to educate the public, because my understanding is that the city government cannot advocate for one outcome or another, but if any of us wanted to set up our own organization or committee to kind of educate the public, I mean, we can do that, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I feel like we I mean, can provide factual information, but we can make 17 advocates. Right, because I just feel like that's something that would be. Probably be something that we would 
ideally do afterward, prior to any votes, to try to get people at least informed about what the current, because I mean, again, going back to the tour, I think a lot of us didn't really appreciate and understand how dilapidated some of these buildings were. And so most people are going to assume that everything's perfectly functioning fine, there's no wasted energy, and they just want to waste money on something new. And that's not the case at all. I know. Yeah. You're never going to. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. You're going to be able to get some. I mean, when yeah. the people do, if they're willing, really. That's true. Yeah, but you got to reach out to the DC and just say, come on, Right. There is a. Mine's a bar. It's got to run all along by one. Yeah. I think the Pacific County, too, because, you know, this world, the water was in Greece, community center, and city hall. So, you know, I think. Has something changed on the football project? Is usually five to four, and there was with this court money. I remember there was a bond. I don't. I talked about it earlier. I forget how much was in there, but I thought we <coughs> talked about the project then coming in and maybe around three once we factor in that. Yeah, that's my understanding. Is that's construction costs, but the lesson learned with the state that we was to talk about this construction in self cost. Talk by one of the package. The instructions only a part of this. And again, it seems that we should say a certain amount not to receive. Because otherwise, we're way too open ended. And we can criticize for. Uses and say, okay, based on that budget, we have to eliminate. Well, these are the reasons we can eliminate. So, if we recommend it, one B, and we have this cost of 12, 4, and 6, 6. Uh, that's pretty wide range. Before council made any decision on a bond amount to put forth, would we get more accurate dates on this? Or is, you know, I, I don't think we'd go out to, correct if I'm wrong, we wouldn't go out to bed until after we have a funding source in place, right? And that be close to the right. to true cost. So we would be utilizing engineering estimates for, for the bond amounts. You know, I guess we, you can look at it either way. You can go for 6-6 six, six and come in at 13. Yeah. <laughs> The, the only, my only concern with that is the flip of that is bid amounts typically guaranteed for 60 to 90 days. So if we're, now we'd be able to coordinate this in such a way that we'd be able to get construction costs on the ballots and closer to it. Uh, maybe once we, when we get closer to the nail down of court plan, we can bring those amounts down a little bit. So can we see a more accurate picture of things that are down? That more accurate picture. Is that the process council will go through or does the large project will go through if we if we recommend it not to exceed we'll just go with the top number, right? Sixteen cents. Yes. There'll, there'll be other fine tuning before the final amount yes. will be. I what I would recommend the city council is we get something closer to like this before we go out and ask the people for their thoughts on it. So we would I would love for the council to have a better floor plan and a better layout of what we're going to do before we move forward. And I think that would show up the accuracy. At 166, it's just a community center and then another four for City Hall. If you're trying to look at all together, you get estimated costs for like the 60s. Yeah, yeah, it's provided on a little cheat sheet. Yeah. 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 I have a question about the bond. Is there any um, is there any financial loss with us doing it in two separate bonds? I mean, are, are we hurting ourselves at all by doing it doing one separate for the city hall? Can't really think of any other okay. than just 
I think the initial be. thought was if we lump them together, it might be more liable to pass. Um, but again, right, you just do two separate projects. Right. Yeah, you, gotta, you can put it on the ballot separately. Yeah. There's no. So we're not like hurt by doing a smaller one and a larger no, one. I can't make a reason why. It'll be for fully cost to reset on percentage of the yeah of the the bond value. So is that a, is that a one? Is that on buyer? Does it have to be the same one? That's in that case. Or, or you know, you might have separate bonds. Yeah, you might have some costs. Um, like rating agencies, they might charge you twice. Yeah. Uh, like an SFB may charge you twice for. For that for rating the bonds, so you may have some duplicate costs, but you're talking ten to twenty thousand dollars of duplicated costs. So I mean, it's still money, but that's all lumped into the bond price anyway. So again, you may have some duplication, but I don't think it'd be the financial advisors like they're based on a percentage of right. of your bond. So I just see some of those other. I mean, my sense though is because they're both in. Structure improvements in existing facilities late to begin around the same time. I mean, uh, combining them may make more sense. I thought when we talked about this before, maybe I'm, I'm, I thought we talked about doing those two pieces together because you know, I thought the consensus was that it was going to be tough because people didn't realize the implication of these buildings. I think a lot of people know about that. Know about the committees and we're not necessarily just wondering the kind of uh, the thought behind that or the fear was one would pass but one wouldn't because one I don't know. Well, I, I'm just so I, I think the prices can be so I don't think anybody expected the prices to come in this high. So yeah. now we're thinking uh, Yeah. Well I also think the thought was we knew already what the the um, the city hall was ready to go already. Right. Up for it. Oh, the issue was not to push that forward until we knew on the community center because there's no way it would have a chance for sure because they didn't know the community center. Right. What are our thoughts on that? I guess what's the drawback in worst case scenario, one is approved and one is not? I mean, that's the exact issue that I think we all have to look at. Like, could, are you amenable to that? Like, if only one is going to pass. Sure. Can you walk away from that thinking mission accomplished? Personally, I think I could. If we were to put them in two separate bonds and one were to fill and one were to pass, I think I'd be copacetic with only doing one now and maybe revisiting the one down the line. Or there are one pass and not me. I, I would be too worried about pitching the whole wagon onto this, what sounds like it's going to be a $20 million omnibus package that, you know, are going to cause some eyes to bug. I mean, it almost puzzled my eyes to bug. But I guess the question is, so if it comes back and the community center does not pass and the cheaper, more affordable city hall does pass and we end up with the community center that's still not usable, you know, the long one pass. I mean, I don't think they're, I don't think it's an either or kind of joint, at least in my mind, it's not. Yeah. I mean, the alternative would be the neither federal. And then all of this was a waste. Yeah. 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 You're right. What if what, what if this goes and not the city hall or not the community center, and we have a dilapidated building that's not conducive to anything that we need? They spoke and they said, "Well, we're fine with a dilapidated community center, but we're gonna have a nice city hall." I mean, that is what we have. I mean, that's plain and simple. It's right. Yeah, I just want to make it clear that the community center is the one I'm angling for. If I had to pick one. But I mean, I personally, I mean, I would support the vote, but I don't know that unless we did this Hearts and Minds campaign where we're taking people every Saturday at 2 and 4 o'clock, we're shoving them into the ice room with our hats so they can see how bad it is. I think what we have, what we need to do is get people to think, come to the community center, visit these amenities, and think to yourself, would you leave your child here for the afternoon? I think that might be a, a way to kind of fear mongers and votes. I know. We had a very funny with my husband, and uh, we were next to that one. Office. I was like, so someone's office is in here. He's like, what? <laughs> you know, I don't think people realize that, you know. I think you have to ask yourself, 
which one do you want? Do you want what's best for the city and get one or the other? Or do you put them together on one bond and just get it? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'll try it right now. I have heard people speak that way. Yeah. I mean, I've asked people like, well, I may have to take my house. <laughs> they are going really? to go out and they're going to campaign one way or the other. I, agree. I can sell them on the city hall. When I can't sell them on the right side. You see, I really want to go around. Well, I think it's a good idea. Yeah. 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 So, but the interesting thing is, this kind of shows us how, depending on who we are and where we are, like in our state of our lives, who we surround ourselves with, people have different priorities. And so, for some people are going to look at the price tag and think 16 and 4, they're going to say no to both. Some, I mean, I, I've been planning on sticking around for a long time. I'm going to vote yes on both. The problem is, some of my neighbors aren't going to do the same thing. So, I want to make sure that if we're only, if we're going to do two separate proposals, I'm going to sit there and think, well, which one can I advocate for the best, the most efficiently, and in the way that's going to bring it home? And that's how you have to market it. Exactly. Which one has to have the government <laughs> behind it to market it? Believe in it, get your butt out there, and get behind it. But I'd rather take my chances on it separately than on the government. Oh, we don't get any of those discouragements. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 we have, I think we've got to down to two things. One is, what are we going to do about, you know, we kind of all seem like we're out of that one beat, and what are we going to do to move forward in that? And then I think the second one is, do we vote on putting them together or separate? So, are we kind of in agreement that there are two kind of pieces right now? Is there anything else that... The only thing I have a question on is, I'm still trying to figure out, we started out talking at 12.5, that was the range of 68. I understand where it came from. But what I'm saying is, if we're going to say one thing is subject to 12.5 or 69.6, we're talking about 4.0. Right. And that was my comment earlier. Uh, and that, that, uh, that doesn't, uh, yeah, that's true. The difference could be. That's why I asked if pencils would be sharpened before the split the difference. Before you were saying don't on too much with the stand tech stuff, and now you're like, let's help stand tech, they can only have They don't know. That's why they've given the range. And I think it's the, when I look at the estimate, it's the the interest is kind of what throws us over. Because even if you look at option 1A, and even 1B, it's still a 13 million base with uh, either 3 or 41, yeah. or 41 million in interest. Yeah. So to me, that's where it comes from. And I see why credit card companies are so fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hypothetically, let's just say for we could buy now like one big package. So you might have an idea of what millage it would be, um, like the or if we do a bond or whatever, but how much additional taxes a year it might translate to? So here's, uh, I'm looking at that page now, it's, okay. it's 70, for a $12 million bond, the okay. average cost for everybody would be somewhere between $75 and $150 a year. So if we double that, let's say everything were combined, it's somewhere between $150 and $300 a year. Yeah, updated numbers. And that's why I was going to say, like, two more.
within the original nine years and trying to get a little bit closer to what interest rates are currently. So again, um, went on a website called Emma and looked up what other communities have issued bond score in the past you know, six months and 4% is about the average. So um, a lot depends on too on how we pay back the bond. So I assumed that we would pay the same principal and interest payment every single year to kind of keep that level even for budgeting purposes. But again, when you bring in bond advisors, they may look at things differently and just try to save the residents the most money. So some of the years your debt service payment can be really high, other years it may be low, because again, that's how you can get the most savings on interest rates. So again, how they can market and sell the bond. So again, a lot of it does vary. So these numbers aren't always going to be hard and, and fast when we get to where we're actually moving forward and sell the bonds. You may say, well, that's not what Sabrina said, but again, there's so many factors that play into it. So again, this is assuming that our debt service payment is exactly the same every single year. I just used a program called T Value, so it's the best I could with what I knew. But um, so you're right, this is again just based on the average. So looking at the mill rate over 15 years. For a 13 million and a 3% bond, I, I did see some that were as low as 3%. And again, a lot depends on the credit rating of the community I was looking at. But yeah, the average mill rate is about 1.8. Right. So again, the average homeowner in this Texas Valley is $75,000. I keep going back to that just because that seems to be the biggest population or pool in the city. Um, right, it'd be about 100 to 200 dollars. So I think you're right on the average, I mean, no matter what, uh, what scenario you look at, it's about the 100 to 200 dollars a year. Um, the biggest thing is when we start getting after that 23 million, so when we talk about uh, getting that 16 million dollar community center and then add on another 4 million for City Hall, your costs really are starting to rise, but it's more around this. 18 to 23 million dollar lobby that you're talking about. So the last option, just something to note as well, if we did go as high as 30 million dollars, I spread it over 20 years. So again, I think average, most communities pay back their, their debt service in 15, but if they can go out to 20, they don't typically go much higher than that, that I've seen. So bold point for 200 bucks. Why go exactly? Well, I think that goes to the selling point, the education point. Right. I know we were joking around about it earlier, but if someone were to start up a, a committee, you know, in support of this this bond, um, I would expect people to be cooperative if you wanted to. And we would bring in a financial advisor as well when we get to that point to shore up some of these numbers. So again, this is. Me using a T value program. So, again, we would definitely make sure that we had our numbers a little bit more accurate with the financial advisors. But so, Tim, that gets to the point of, you know, maybe you know, we use the 66 as the not to exceed and then expect that the pencil gets sharpened before the final. It's just a list of figures up there. What are the rules of action? Yeah, that 13 was kind of the low end, so that was taking, again, just trying to give those different pictures of option 1A and 1B was the low end was 12 and the high end was 17, so I think 13, this is the low, and then here's kind of that 18, which is more of that high range of the 1B or around the 3A and 3B, so. So again, this line too is kind of over that 15 years period on the average over the cost of That's true. Well, we talked right to the max seven six six. I'm still I'm still in Again, so this is for your value with our home value of 150000 So if you're in one of the newer homes, that's a $300,000 home with a market value of three hundred thousand dollars you have to remember this number doubles yeah. again just something to think about
And the thing is, too, we I think we have to emphasize with the, with the residents is that there is savings because there's a lot. I'm sure there's a lot of money used to heat or cool some of the buildings now that uh, there's waste in just because there's a hole. But then, other items, other things. I mean, I agree with you. I just think when you, you, you can't you can't really use that as a point of that sticker shop. So yeah. We're gonna save money on gas. Uh, it's not going into their pockets. It's going exactly, into the city, exactly. which then ultimately. So it's indirect, but yeah. yeah. And the community is uh, three times as big, which you have now. Maybe one that's a wash, right? Oh, yeah. 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 or two. I think the road would be that's probably the easier decision to make for both. So I think for purposes of today, I think are we able to proceed with making a decision as to which option we're going to recommend? It's my yeah. I'm, I'm, ready, I'm, yeah. I'm ready to make so, motion. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll withdraw my previous one. Oh, so, you are, no, oh, no, 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 please. Absolutely. I guess I would just make a motion to um, recognize and recommend option 1B to the city council. Uh, I mean, I think just as is, I just kind of offer it as is. I think. Um, <laughs> No, I, like, I like that for a particular reason. I like it because it means that the city council is now going to have to make some decisions on its own. Absolutely. So how much money they want to spend. And get the big bucks that they should. Oh, so <laughs> 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 no, I, I think that I think that they have to buy buy into this. Absolutely. I mean, because then it kind of uh, there's ownership then on all levels, and this is not an idea that we kind of kind of offer up. Hey, we'll be united. <laughs> Somehow, by the time the project's over, it's always a little over budget. For so, sure. um, I guess we can, I think we can proceed with what we have here with 1B and um, see what meaningful changes are made when it leaves this committee. Any further discussion? I'll second the motion. I already did. Oh, well, <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for safe in doing this, but uh, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Next issue would be City Hall. Well, is the next issue the balancing? Yeah. I'm sorry? Is the next issue the balancing of the Well, we uh, was going to wait and see if we had a uh, recommendation for City Hall. If we don't, it doesn't really matter if we do. Can you pass them out here? Yeah. 
she said, our planning to work with that would not be one by our separate Or should that be yes. up to no, it, we, it's well within our focus to, uh, to recommend that, and again, to a recommendation. I was telling our Dakota guy, I said, my neighbor has the tallest weed. He's like, I haven't seen it at all. I'm like, come on, look at my store in my office. It's that darn court. They have a little grass. My face is going to court like that. Yeah. You watch all the rats run around. I'm going to get him up the wall. I'm going to yeah, well, there's arguments. Some people chicken. thought they were shrews. Some people <laughs> thought they were. Yeah, it was the main. He started catching. There's a five-year-old in there. 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 There's a five
Well, that was going to be my next comment, I think, with our last uh, recommendation. They were very, very little more detail than we got here. It was pretty straightforward. Uh, we feel we need to. Yeah. 
Chip, will you, will you inform us via email whether we'll be reconvening and try to discuss education or will that be somebody else? Uh, we will not. That will be totally separate. If everyone's fine with the recommendations that we made here, I'll send out the final copy of our recommendation, which will be obviously very straightforward to everybody through email. And we'll let Council know we'll be ready to make that recommendation at their next uh, meetings. And uh, we can have a uh, motion to adjourn. And, uh, so we'll see. Yeah, I was just saying, well, I don't see a reason to do that. Do you need another credit? Let's get rid of it together. Okay. Are you having trouble with it? So, um, just. I was, and then I'm back on the list again. I said I was having issues and now I'm back on the list again. I think I, I you know, Straight made out, a fly right. Yeah. Right. Well, I'm, I'm going to send an email out to those, the group. One city council, council has made their decision. Um, I'll email everyone based on the, um, the email string that, that was going around to uh, find a neutral date and time if you want to get together and talk about what we can do from there. I'm like, oh, Monday's at 6.30 work, so. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank uh, which means and we only have one meeting in July, so the uh, council would have to approve this on June 19th. It would, we have to approve the minutes for the June meeting and our one July meeting in order to put it on the ballot for November. We only really meet once, uh, really meet once in July because of the Independence Day holiday, and then we won't meet the first week in August, we'll the third week in August. So just. If, we're, if we really are shooting for November, oh, it suddenly becomes a very tight time. Okay. Uh, just a note. Okay. Yeah, I, City attorney. I was going to say, I, I think from, oh, I from our happen. standpoint, so I think we could have some of that this week. Where that's fine. Matt, does the city attorney yeah. draft the actual language when that goes in the ballot? Typically, it's, yeah, that's what Is I've that, seen. Like I don't a, know if that or like a bad bond council. Yeah, yeah. Bond yeah. Council typically, it's your bad council that I've seen. So would that have to happen prior to the I'm out of the <laughs> 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 next month. And then it has to be approved in July. Uh, to be in August. I don't know how. Is there anything else that needs to happen for you? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to get a lot of down on the mountain. Yeah, I need to get a lot of down on the mountain. Bond council, you're not going to get a bond council to do it in a week. What's that? So we we were discussing everything that needs to happen. So they would have to get approved ballot language itself, which means we would need through the bond council lock in the interest rate as well as uh, you know, uh, the actual dollar amount for city council to approve the ballot language itself yeah, uh, on the nineteenth of this month in order to approve minutes in July in order to meet the August filing deadline for November. Yeah, but <laughs> It's a very start making phone calls so. first thing tomorrow morning. I, I just don't see it. I, I haven't seen it happen that fast, but that doesn't happen. Could it happen? Right. In yeah. the worst case scenario, then we have to push. It's worth a phone call. Yeah. 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 Have they already approved the language for the road? Nothing's been drafted. No language has been written up. Okay. So that's what the staff will make every effort possible. Knowing what the feeling of the advisory is, we'll make every effort possible. It's possible. Yeah. 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 So I think we still proceed the same way. Uh, I'd say let's not worry about things. I say the block up and something up to everybody tomorrow. I think staff knows where we are, so they can start making their phone calls tomorrow morning and hopefully uh yeah. or Mike and Morgan. We'll like Andy. I know we really wanted to know but it's still from a perspective of I think when things are 
just brush this thighs are right yeah. and it would take so me like I'm just letting you it's not that um Yep. Does it make sense to uh yeah. Yeah. does it make sense to put roads on the number? I think so. Well, well, I think we're ready for roads. I think we have roads. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. You know what? It may end up working or bad but anyways, yeah, yeah. 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 the other separate ballots only a stick with sticker shocking. There are three ballots once you got already and then I know we were looking to try to get average together, but now looking at all of the numbers, maybe not all of them. Just because it's gonna get handled and put a bit longer. Oh. I just don't want to do it. Yeah, I mean a, a lot just depends on talking to Ben Council Financial Advisors tomorrow morning and how fast they can do everything and, and what the exact process is. So I've never seen it done this fast, but that doesn't mean it can't happen. But I, mean, I guess if they can't, if they're able to do the road issue, my sense is they'd be able to do everything. Well, the road issue is not through Ben Council, so that's something that I have to look into because that's just a... Uh, yeah, so, that's just another you know, what that's on me though. I guess what can we do to get confirmation that someone will fall tomorrow? I will tell you. <laughs> <laughs> we wrote down our yeah, we wrote down the band council that I have used in the past. Okay. So I will call him in the morning and see or shoot him an email even to exactly. make sure it's fine. She might call them and they might say Never in a million years, and then we have our right. answer. Yeah. And then if she calls him tomorrow and says, Well, yes, I'm bored, then I mean, <laughs> then we'll, we can go from there. Right. I think I'm most sure likely, he has nothing to do right now. So. <laughs> I'm sure you're going to call him and he's going to tell you fat chance that this is, yes. is obvious. But I think for now, like, why don't right. we just find out and then we can go from there rather than right. try to you know, navigate them in a bit. So I, hopefully we can get it out of November. If not, then it's going to be positive. And regardless of the answer, yeah, it doesn't right. really affect this committee, right? Exactly. Right. Yeah, right. Just, just, yeah. We don't get it on November, and then we get it on February or May. February or May. And that maybe, I mean, they're also going to decide that. So they might do that. And the good point is, you know, they need some time to yeah. educate yeah. things. It's Yeah, I'm sorry. I mean, council again. Yeah. Right. Exactly. We're only making it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.